Hey, good morning, Buff Nation. Welcome back to another video. We got a juicy one here for you guys today. And a writer from On3, Jesse Simpton, I believe is how it's pronounced, wrote an article just coming from the absolute top rope on Coach Prime here, giving out his thoughts and opinions, saying that there's some red flags on how Coach Prime is running Colorado. So some of you may, I've seen your comments, some of you may rejoice with what you're about to hear from this article, and some of you may, may be a little disgusted with the words and phrases that are used to describe this ha what, what happened with Coach Prime and how he handled the on offensive coordinator situation. We're going to read it, break it down, give my thoughts and opinions, so let's dive right into it. First order of business. Demote Sean Lewis seems like a mistake by Deion Sanders, no? The offense isn't the problem for Colorado. It's their defense. I feel like we've we just kind of talked, we've had like three videos about how the defense is making in progress. I feel like, yes, it's had its issues, for sure. But it's moving in the right direction. But I digress. Deion Sanders knee-jerk decision to yank play calling duties away from Sean Lewis and hand them to NFL retread Pat Schumer, who hasn't coached a call game since the late 90s, has never played calls with amateurs and doesn't run an air raid system. Reeks of desperation needing to put blame somewhere. Now, I agree that it was a knee-jerk reaction. I said that just a couple videos ago, that it was a very big decision to make, but I felt that it was more of a decision to see where the issue lied. Sometimes you make a drastic decision to find out where the problem is, where the leak is, right? You make a massive move to see, hey, where, what's really happening? Because if you make small things here and there, you may not see where the leak is coming from or where the true issue lies. He knows the offense you know, is a big issue. And to say, to point blame somewhere else, hold, hold the phone really quick. I, he's never really once tried to point the blame anywhere outside of his offensive line sucks or if he's got some, you know, if he's down a few players, he's been very accountable on that. But I think you know and I both know that if he does, by him switching to Pat Schumer and this also fails, everyone's going to look back at Coach Prime and blame Coach Prime. You're not going to move the blame elsewhere. It may be a short-term blaming area where he's like, well, I moved off into coordinator because Pat Schumer wasn't doing his job or Sean Lewis wasn't doing his job, so now Pat Schumer's doing it. But if he fails too... At the end of the day, it's going to look like two collapse, two collapses under Coach Prime. So I don't believe he's moving the blame. I don't think he's going to be able to just to brush that off. He may try to, you know, he might try to pull that off and say that he is. I just don't feel see that's happening because at the end of the day, it all goes back to the top. The question is, why did Coach Prime deem such an explicable decision necessary? Is he trying to protect his Sunshine or Sanders draft stock? He knows his offensive line isn't going to magically get bigger and better at run blocking. So why did Moat what many consider his best offseason hire? That I completely agree with. It was his best offseason hire. Be able to get Sean Lewis from Kent State, I thought it was an absolute steal. I couldn't believe it. I go, my goodness, here he comes. Now, it hasn't worked out to the way I believe a lot of us thought it would. But again, there's more issues to it. And he even said in his press conference, and this is where people are going to start to, he gets into it just a little bit here with the tinted windows comment. That look, we are all sitting around the table making decisions. I just wanted to see if maybe somebody calling the plays a little differently may have a different out outcome with it. I, I don't know. I digress. But to say it's going to, pr to protect Shador Sanders' draft stock. Now, he gets into this in just a moment here because obviously running the football has not been the case for Colorado. And when Pat Schumer came in, they still didn't run the football, which he's going to make a note here in just a moment. So then I'm like, okay, do you make this comment? Because are you implying that Sean, Sean Lewis wanted to run the ball more? But Coach Prime didn't, so he basically just benched him and said, hey, Pat Schumer, I can control you, so this is what we're going to do. Because how are you protecting his draft stock? Everyone watching the football game knows, like, hey, the issue is the offensive line, and he's still he's still the highest passer uh, in college football and still is in the top five for a Heisman favorite. I don't believe it's Pat Schumer or Sean Lewis, or if I'm calling the offense, it's going to impact his draft stock. Felt like a little bit of a reach there because it is his son. It's always going to be an easy personal jab. That's how I feel that, that that's being said. But let's continue. Unsurprisingly, Schumer's fingerprints didn't suddenly solve Colorado's problem. He's correct. Ironically, in the loss to Oregon State on Saturday, Schumer actually called passes more on pre-play bases than Lewis had in any game this season. The bus played at a slightly slower tempo, but still ran the ball for just 31 yards on 11 carries. So problems not solved. And I agree, it didn't feel like we had this massive change on the offense. Also, going back to what I iterated just a few moments ago, they all sit around the same table. They all have the same calls. Even Shador said, he goes, look, it's all been pretty much the same thing. It's just a different different look, different eye, different feel, different call. Trying something new. Didn't know that was such a big deal. Sanders has already exceeded expectations in year one at Colorado. Agreed. He's under no pressure to produce more, yet he panicked after a three-game losing streak. There we go. That's the red flag. All right, here we go. Now we're into the, to the, to the cream, cream, cream crop here. He's under no pressure to produce more. I, he has said in every single press conference that he does not like to lose. He is not used to losing. This is not the coach prime that he is used to being. And same for Shador Sanders. 
he is under pressure. He's under his own pressure that he's created to be successful. I agree with the comment in the sense like, look, you've done a lot. Nobody's going to come out here and say fire coach Brian because you've, you're on a three-game losing streak. But I, he didn't come to Colorado to be on a three-game losing streak. He came to call Colorado and say, hey, we're coming. He came to Colorado to make an impact. And right now they're not making an impact. So did he panic? No. Did he make a, a knee-jerk decision possibly to see what was going on? Yes. But to say that he's panicking because he wants to make a decision. Now, you could argue, well, let it run its course. Trust the process, which he gets into a moment here. But you brought multiple people in. Let me try something new here. Let's keep going. Sanders' hand waved any explanation for why he made the move, mainly saying, trust the process. And I got tinted windows and you can't even see in the house. The lack of self-awareness with tinted windows, quote, is comically considering Colorado is the most overexposed program in America with cameras filming everything for Sanders' reality show on YouTube. Oh. And the rash decision screams the opposite of trust. As for Lewis, he is the likely one and done with the buffs, but the former Kent State head coach will be among the more sought out after OCs in the country this season. His market is already hot behind the scenes and will continue to grow in the coming weeks. It got really juicy here at the end. The lack of self-awareness. Whew. Most overexposed program in America. Look, I bet those, those things, I, I, that part I do agree with. I mean, we, we see everything. That's nothing. Is, no stone is left unturned. But we don't see behind the scenes in the meeting. It's almost like this weird thing. Like, we see so much that we're not asking to get in any further, right? That we're not asking to see other things. So, I agree, yes, we are seeing a lot. I agree that we do get more behind the scenes than any other football program in the country. But we're not sitting next to them when they're, when they're playing calls. We're not sitting next to them in the coaches' meeting. We don't see any of that. And again, because we're, we're not there, we're not as intrigued to see it because we're getting enough piece of the pie. So I, I disagree. I understood what Coach Prom was saying. It's like, you guys don't see how we're running the organization. You're only seeing what I'm allowing you to see, right? His son is producing that content. I can, I can assure you, he, he has an idea of like, hey, don't let this out. Don't let that out. I don't want that going out. They show certain videos they don't show, right? So that we're getting nitpicky at this point. Um, as for Lewis, is he likely one and done? That's a hell of a claim. It's a hell of a claim. Right? I, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, Sean Lewis didn't come to be backseat to Pat Schumer. I do agree with that. So, if that is going to be the case, he might be one and done. Um, but I think, again, there's a lot of other issues that are causing this not to work. We'll see what happens this week in Arizona. They haven't. He hasn't really commented on where the moves are going to be headed or how they plan to do anything different. So, we'll see. I mean, obviously, you got a big game against Arizona at home. Got to see some Got to see some moving around here, for sure, on the offensive line. But, hell of an article. Hell of an article to take a take a swing here at Coach Prime. I want to know in the comments down below. Was he spot on here? Was he, you know, perfectly said? Was he over the top a little bit? I mean, I feel like, you know, there's there's some things that I feel like he was correct on, but also, look, took his shot, took a swing. Some people aren't fans of how things are being ran in Colorado, so I understand that. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know down in the comments how you felt about the entire situation. Be sure to smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.